All right, let's go ahead and get started on the notes. So make sure you have this unit title page. I know a lot of you don't like to put it in there, but just go ahead and glue it in. It helps you stay organized, especially if you wanna come back and study for your test. Okay, so this is unit one, and the title is Graphs, Attributes, and Applications of Functions. Let's see if I can squeeze all that on there. Okay, and then the first lesson is 1.1, and it's going to be titled Domain and Range. So I know last year we did a lot of stuff with Domain and Range, and it is not y'all's favorite thing. So we are going to review it just because in pre-cal we do a lot of stuff with domain and range. So I want to make sure that you're good on that before we move on to anything else. Okay, let's go ahead and go on to the next page. So let's go over discrete and continuous functions. Remember discrete functions are functions with distinct and separate values. So they're just points on the graph, it's kind of like a scatter plot. You can't draw a line through them, they have to be individual points. So for example, on this first graph A, if my x-axis um, or my domain represented like number of people, I would have to keep these points at these exact whole numbers, okay? I wouldn't want to like 10 and a half or 30 and a quarter, okay? We can't have 30 and a quarter of people. It has to be an exact number of people. So this is an example of when you would use a discrete function is if your domain needs to be distinct separate values, okay? It can't be fractional values where you could draw a continuous smooth line through them. All right, so let's start with this first graph, A. We need to find the domain. And remember that domain is all of the x values. So we are going to do a curly bracket, and we're just gonna list out all of the x values from least to greatest. So let's go ahead, and I'm gonna circle this x axis just so that you can get this visual of what the domain is. And we're going to start with the least x value. So if I'm moving from left to right, my first x value would be at 10. And then I have another one at 20, 30, 40, 50. And it looks like it just keeps increasing by 10s each time until we get to 90. Now let's switch and do the range. Remember that range is all the y values. So now we're not going left to right, we're going bottom to top because we're going from least to greatest. So if we start with the first y value, it would be right here at 15. And then the next one is at 25, then 30, 40, 50. Okay, it looks like we actually have two at 55. If you have a repeated number, you don't need to write it twice, just write it down once. And then we have one at 60 and 70. Okay, so this one was not ingo, um, increasing by tens each time. Each value was a little bit different. Okay, now let's do the next one. So we're gonna look at domain, which is all the X's. 
So I'm going from left to right. So my first x value is at negative 3. Then negative 2. Positive 1. Positive 2. And then 5. Okay, let's go to the range. We're moving from bottom to top because we're looking at all the y values. So my least y value is at negative 5. Then 0. Be careful, that one's tricky. Okay, it's actually at 0 on the y axis. And then I have 2 at... There we go. And then my last one is up here at positive 4. Okay, so that's for discrete functions. Discrete, make sure you list out the points individually, just like what the graph looks like. Now let's come down here to continuous functions. A continuous function is a function with an infinite amount of points that are connected with a smooth line. Pecos, don't make fun of my handwriting. I'm trying the best that I can here. You know, I gotta pick on you. Let's look at this graph A. Um, continuous is a little bit harder just because you have a little bit more going on than discrete graphs. So on this first one, I have a beginning and an end point. Okay, my graph starts here at zero and then it ends over here at eight for my domain. So anytime you have a beginning and an end, you're going to do a double inequality. Whoa, there we go. So for the domain, I need my least and greatest x value. So my least value is at zero, and then my greatest value is at eight. So if I write this as a double inequality, I would start at zero, and that would be less than or equal to x, less than or equal to eight. Okay, but I also want you to get in the habit of writing it not as an inequality, but as an interval. So with an interval, remember that you, are, you bracket a closed circle and you use a parenthesis for an open circle. So since these have an actual exact point at zero and eight, I could bracket zero and then comma, go all the way to eight and then do another bracket, okay? Now, um, I'm actually going to draw the same blue line at the top here so we can kind of box this function in. And that's just going to give you a really good visual of where the domain and range begins and ends on this entire graph. Okay, now let's switch and go to the range. So now I'm looking from bottom to top because I'm looking from my least to greatest y value. So my least y value is right here at 0. And then the maximum... Don't think that it's at 100. A lot of kids make mistakes and think, oh, the greatest y value is at 100. It's not. Okay, we have this maximum all the way up here. It goes up all the way to 150. So I could box in this whole graph and see that it goes from 0 to 150. So I would write this as 0 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 150. And if we want to write it as an interval, we would bracket 0, comma, all the way to 150, and then do another bracket. Okay, let's look at the next one. This is an example of when a single inequality would be used. For this domain, I can look on the ends of this graph and see that I have two arrows. I don't have two endpoints like I did in the previous graph. This graph continues on and on forever. So if I extended this window out, this graph would actually just keep extending to the left to the right. It would just keep growing and growing and growing. 
So when this happens, we say that the domain has all real numbers. And we can write it as an inequality or an interval notation as negative infinity to positive infinity. But I'm going to show you something that sometimes pops up. And it looks like this. X such that X is an element of, whoops, that was a weird E, all real numbers. So don't get confused when you see this notation. You saw it last year in Algebra 2. Remember that this means X, this little bar means such that, and then X is an element of all real numbers, okay? I'm just gonna make you do this little fancy R symbol. I'm not gonna make you do the other stuff, but I do want you to be aware of that because you may see it later on, especially if you take some college math classes. Okay, so I can also write this as negative infinity to positive infinity. And remember, anytime you have an infinity sign, you need to use a parenthesis because it's open. It's just going to keep going on and on forever. All right, now let's move to the range. So for my y value, I actually have a beginning point, and it's right here at negative 4. So since I only have one point, and then the rest of the graph keeps growing, this would need a single inequality. my initial points at negative four, and then I can see that all of my y values are greater than that. So whenever I write this as an inequality, I would start with the variable, and my variable is a y since we're talking about range, and y would be greater than or equal to negative four because there's nothing, no values below negative four that are on this graph. Everything is above negative four. And then if I wanna write this as a interval, I would start at negative four and bracket it because it's an exact point and then it would keep growing all the way to positive infinity. All right, let's move on to this last example, C. So in this graph, um, if I look at my domain, from the left to the right, my graph keeps growing. Okay, so once again, this would be an example of all real numbers. So we could write it this fancy way in set notation. X such that X is an element of all real numbers. Or if I wanna write it in interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, this graph is just gonna keep on going from left to right. Now, if I switch and do the range, the same thing happens because if I'm looking at the graph on the y-axis from the bottom to the top, it keeps growing as well. So there's no endpoints on this graph whatsoever. It just keeps growing and growing and growing in both directions. So the range would be the exact same thing. It would be all real numbers because I could plug in any number into this function and it would spit out a number, okay? Um, so I could write, whoops, not x. Let me rewrite that. So we're working with range. So y such that y is an element of all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity. On the um, paper you're about to do on Google Classroom, I think they're all in interval notation. So just a heads up. Um, you're going to be doing interval notation on the worksheet, but we're going to see both interval and inequality notation throughout the whole year. Okay, let's go on to some of these other examples. Um, on this practice, let's do them all in interval notation since that's how your homework's going to be. We're going to do this first one together, and then I'm going to let you do the second one on your own for a ticket. All right, so let's do the domain. And I am going from left to right on my x-axis. So my least x value would be here at negative 5. I'm just going to box this thing in. So you can visually see that. So my least value is negative 5. And then my greatest x value is 0. And then I just need to determine, do I need to bracket it or put parentheses? So since negative five is an open circle, 
it can actually equal negative 5. I would put a parenthesis there. And then at 0, I can actually equal 0 on that graph, so I would put a bracket there since it's a closed circle. Now let's switch and go to range. So I'm going from bottom to top from least to greatest y value. So if I box that in, my lowest y value is negative 4, and my highest y value is positive 5. So since negative 4 is a closed circle and it can actually equal that value, I would bracket in negative 4 and then put a parenthesis around positive 5. Okay, I'm going to have you pause the video. I want you to try number 2 on your own. Do the domain and range. And after you get done, see if you get it correct. And if so, you can get a ticket. All right, let's go over this example. I'm sure you all got it right because you're all geniuses. So domain, left to right, my least to greatest x value. So this graph starts at negative 5 on my x-axis and goes all the way to positive 3. So I'm going from negative 3, I meant, sorry, negative 5 to positive 3. And those both are solid lines, so I would bracket in both the negative 5 and the 3. Those are exact numbers on that graph. Okay, now for the range, my least y value is at negative 3, and my greatest y value is at positive 3. And same thing, I could bracket in both of those because it's solid endpoints. Okay, let's move on to this discrete function. So as you can tell, there's not a smooth line. So if you have these discrete individual points, you need to just list them out, okay? So for the domain, do your little curly bracket, squiggle bracket, and we're moving from left to right. So my least x value would be here at negative 3. And then negative 2. I've got two points at positive 1. And then another one at positive 4. Ooh, that was a beautiful squiggle bracket. Let's switch to range. So now my least y value is at negative 4, then negative 2, 0, positive 3, and finally 5. All right, so let's move to this absolute value graph. Uh, let's look at the domain. So this one does not have endpoints. It just has arrows that would continuous, continually keep moving this graph from the left to the right. So it's just continually growing. If I were to extend my window, it would just keep going and going and going. So remember when that happens, we would say all real numbers. Um, but if we're writing it in interval notation, we need to write it as negative infinity to positive infinity because there's no stopping. It just keeps going and going and going like Buzz Lightyear to infinity and beyond. Now let's do the range. So my starting point is at positive 3 and then I need to determine are all my values less than that or greater than that. So you can see that all of the y values are less than that. So we would start from negative infinity, and then the graph would go all the way to positive 3 and stop. Anytime you're writing an interval, you always have to write negative infinity first, okay? Because we're going from the least to the greatest. All right, last two examples, and I'm going to be super nice and let you try to get tickets on these two. So I want you to do domain and range for each of them on your own. Pause the video, and then we'll go over them together. If you got both of them correct, you can get two more tickets. 
Y'all should be thankful because last year with the seniors, I completely forgot to give them ticket opportunities and we like hardly ever had a ticket drawing. So hopefully you'll get these right and get some tickets. Okay, so you should have gotten for domain negative two to positive two, and both of those are open circles, so we would just do parentheses. If you needed to box it in, you could have. Um, now let's switch for range. My range goes from negative three to positive two, and I could bracket in the negative three since it's a solid line going through that point but the two would have to be a parenthesis because it is open. All right, now to the discrete graph. Let's see if you remembered it was discrete and did individual points. So do your little squiggle bracket. You should have gotten negative three, negative two, one, two, and five. Now for the range, you should have gotten negative five, zero, one, and four. All right, so if you got both of those correct, you can get two tickets. If you just got one, then you can get one ticket. Um, your assignment is on Google Classroom, so you're gonna click on it, pull up the Google slide assignment, and then it's uh, like drag and drop. So you're going to drag the correct domain and range onto the spots um, of the picture on there. And then make sure whenever you get done that you turn it in on Google Classroom by Friday at 3.30. Hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you soon.